uh, I will start with the uh, with the templates. Maybe I will, if I close that. See if, uh, no. When you first start Advanced Cell, you will have access to this page in here. Um, to start a new new project, you have just to click in here new and um, select one of the two templates that you have in here uh, within metric or imperial. <laughs> Like for example, do you guys use most metric or imperial? Imperial most of the time. Imperial. Okay, okay perfect. So we will pick the imperial one and we we'll just hit open. Okay, now that I just started advanced seal, I will I will um we we'll go in here and try to put some grids. Um, to put some grids, we have to go to objects in here. Um, for the for the standard grids that I that I use for the most of and uh, that I suggest to be used is the, you know just the standard one. If you select um, in here, please define two diagonals points from grid origin. Um, if I put zero uh, dot zero dot zero, it will start from the origin x and y axis, and that's what is suggested. If I hit just enter, he will just give me a grid in here. Does this make sense for you guys? Let's yeah. see here. Go to. Uh... I will do it go again. To okay. Go to objects. Go to objects. In here we have grids. Grid. Okay. When you click, he will, he will, he will ask you to just pick a point. If you just put zero, zero, zero points, so he will snap at the origin. He will just hit enter. He will, he will just show you where he, he is, uh, where he is pointing. After that, we will just go and hit enter. It will give you the, the standard grid. Okay, I'm going to we'll just type in zero zero zero, huh? Yep. So we will, you can you can tap zero 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 or just click within your model. We'll do it again. For example, I'm selecting that in here. You know, but he will put your grid in here where you clicked. Yeah, you have clicked. I'm not getting anything here. No? Not a thing. Okay, I'm gonna make you a presenter. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> what the heck's going on with this? I, I just uh, sent you the the invitation to be uh, the uh, the presenter, so I will see your screen. Okay, you got it. Uh, it is see? it is it Dean? Yes, this is Dean. Okay, well maybe I'm I'm gonna do it again. Bert, did you get one? No, because he's not making me the presenter. Yeah, I was have. You are no longer the presenter. Okay. Hard time putting the grid in. Now you should have something, Dean. I have. You're the presenter. Yes. Okay. Everyone ready? Show my screen. Okay. Hit that, huh? Yep. Okay. Okay. Now we see it. Doesn't it doesn't bother you to work on this uh, this color? Uh, it does actually. <laughs> I much prefer the black and white. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for that, just right click. Okay. Go to option. Options. Uh, go to. Uh, yep. Okay. Mm, no, it will be display. Display. No, nope, not there. Yes. Okay. Color. Color. Yep. Okay. Okay. 
Hey, oh, I like that a lot better. Yep. Okay, now if you go and select grids. Okay. It's zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. I didn't. Enter. Mm, mm. Okay, if you hit enter again. Enter again. Hey. Here it is. Okay. okay. Seems All to be right, good. Good to go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it seems to be good. Okay. Uh, does it make sense for all of you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Perfect. Well, I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Now I just created the standard grid. But for example, if I want to modify this grid. Um, as you might notice, we don't deal with lines anymore. If I select, like for example, this direction or this grid, it's interrelated with the other grids. It's really interrelated. So if I if I want to modify, like for example, this direction of the grids, I have to double click on it. When I double click, I have access to this dialog box. This is how advanced steel is working actually. Uh, we don't deal with lines anymore, we deal with objects. So every time you want to modify something that it is intelligent or, you know, we, we call it um, intelligent, just double click on it and you will have access to a dialog box. So you will, um, you will do it within the dialog box in here. Okay, for example, I'll give you an example. I, I have I have double clicked on this direction, and on this direction we have number instead of um, letters. If I want to have in here capital letters, I have to double click, go to total. In here, label type. We have number. We have numbers in here. If I click, I have the choice: small letters, capital letters, or numbers. If I want to put some capital letters, I ha all I have to do is just to select it. Okay, I double click on an object um, and I get a properties. Just just double click on it, the dialog box will appear automatically. Seems Did to be good. Convert? It works. I got the dialog box. You got the dialog box? Yeah. Just double click as you double click on an icon on Windows or something like that. Double click on the grid. Holy crap. If you have yeah, properties, yeah. maybe you have something else uh, selected. Maybe you have the both of them, the both directions selected. They are, they are, yeah, they are both selected. No, just because yeah, guess, this one is not one. related to this one. Okay. If you right, select right. more than one object, you will have the properties of the both. Okay. So, let me escape out of here and figure out how to get out of this thing. Okay. All right. Let me try this. Got out of there. Okay. I got it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, if I double click. I will have access to all the parameters that controls this direction, this grid, the grid that is selected within my screen. Do you see it in here? If I want to put, for example, some balloons in here, I just have to put some endings instead of none. Mm -hmm. Example endings. Do you see that? I see that. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Now, if you if you are if you skip to group to the next. Now we were on total. If you skip to group, he will automatically highlight the uh, the direction that you are working on. 
will highlight it. Uh, now you will have to control the number of the grids you have and or the distance. For example, for the number instead of four, I want for example six. He will just put them and he will modify his uh, order like A, B, C, D, and so on. Now he is on F order. If I if I select it again instead of six, I want to go to five. Now he will just modify it to go to five. Five accesses within this distance in here. Seems to be good for you guys. Okay. Does this make sense? Makes yes. Sense. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, after that, if you go to... Yep. yep. I hear that someone have a question. Um, not me. Okay. I got in there. Nope. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> and here for the group... Um, okay, we just saw that. For the single axis. For example, between A and B axis we have A uh, A dot 1, for example. Um, in here we have the possibility to to have them, to have the, these axes. If you go to single axis, the next tab, single axis, Okay, single axis. If you go over here and you select, like for example, side one or side two of axis A or you know axis, you have to select in here within uh, this this axis index. You have to select within you know which between which axis you want to add the secondary axis. For example, he will, he will highlight every axis that you have selected. Like for example, I want to put an axis in here and in here between A and B and B and C. I will check the side one. Have you noticed guys, he just put something like this, another axis with no uh, name on the balloon. I will just offset this axis. The side distance, it's two inches, maybe I will put uh, 20. Um, 40 will be better. That's it. For the other side, I will just put uh, 45. Perfect. Well, in here for the, for, have you noticed that he just haven't any name to put uh, to, to put in him in, in there in the balloon? So you have to put some prefix in here. One or B1 B1 so we will have them in here and in here we have to put you know for example B2 so you will have it does this make sense for you guys add in the secondary axis um, yeah. maybe guys you should just take notes after explaining one macro, I will let you the, the uh, I will let you the time to practice that to have some examples, uh, you know. And I will see each other. Uh, I will see, uh, you know, each one on his uh, computer. So now, just you have to just take notes if uh, you know it's uh, it's much better. After that, I will let you the time to practice that. Okay. Now we just saw single access, the uh, the main the main utility just to uh, to add accesses between two main access. It's secondary access. Um, to control between which access you will add them, in here you have access index, and he will highlight between each access. He will highlight you so it will be much visual. Okay, in the last tab, we have in here display types. 
for display types. Uh, it's just a presentation of the uh, of the uh, the accesses in here. I will give you an example. Okay, if I select this direction, uh, have you noticed the little uh, blue boxes in here? If I snap, he will add accesses. Each time he will he will go over the 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 distances between the two first axes. He will add them. And for the name, he will just follow the order. Is it clear for you guys? Yes. We can give it a whirl here. Okay. Now to get them back, you have just to go in here. Just. That's That was the 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 middle one, but if I go in here, I, I, I am stretching all the grid. Yeah. The first one he will add access, but this one he will stretch all the grid in equal distances. Look for example, if I click here, it will be stretched. That was the uh, the utility of the uh, those blue boxes in here. And you have them over here if you wanna, you know, just uh, go over just to see the intersection from this side and this side as well. Okay, I will return. If I double click in here, I will return to the last tab, display types. If I go in here, I have off. So I, you know, for example, if I just don't want to see my grids, I have a huge model. It's really uh, full of, you know, uh, construction lines. I'm, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's a lot to, to see. So I was, I'm going to just put them off. If I want to put them on again, I have to go in here and select standard. So it will be on the standard presentation. If I select them in here, I only, I am only allowed right now to control the first and the last axis. I don't have any blue boxes within each axis. If I want to control each axis alone, I have to double click on it, display types, and in here check single accesses. So now if I select them, I will control each one, you know, alone. I will have much more control than I had before. Does it make sense for you guys? Yes. Yeah. And single access, yes. That was single access. And you mm -hmm. can what you can do, if you select this one, you can just click on it and select the uh, uh, select the sense and maybe for example just stretch it by 10 inches it will just be stretched by 10 inches as I just did here seems to be good for you guys just how to create uh, grids how to put endings to put capital letters, you know, to set the distance, to set the number of the grids that we have here. Let me play with that a little bit before we move yep. on, Hansa. Yep, that's uh, that will be the next step. I will let you guys, I will let you uh, five to uh, ten minutes to play with that. Uh, I will, I will pass over each one just to see to see you within your computer if you have some trouble. So from now I'm just letting you um I'm here. If you have some questions don't hesitate. Yeah, I just deleted oh there we go. Never mind. Okay, if you now, delete how did something you... you have your endo. No, not yet. <laughs> how do you, uh, um, once you have the grid, then you, you create additional objects. And let me go back into display type. I was trying to think about how to get back to the original one. 
where you just had the standard grid four or five points, whatever you picked up. So here, you, are, are okay, you talking I'm in about standard? Um, well, I created a lot of additional objects, and then I are, are additional uh, um, access, but I need to get rid of them. Okay. Um, I just uh, I just sent you the invitation to see your. Okay, perfect. Thank so you. now to, to to delete them, return to single access. Ret oh, return to single access. Okay. Now he is highlighting axis A, but you don't have any additional access on that one. The additional access that I see you have is between uh, is between. Uh, if you go instead of axis index instead of A, put it to B. Okay. Can you select the A name? You know, no, the no, um, just the, the, the one. A name or in the name? Okay. Okay. We go. Not that one. Can you select the C one instead of B? No. Not there. No, instead of in the access index. Okay. Now, uh, to to make the changes take place, you have to select, uh, you know, other case. Well, maybe I will I will put myself presenter, so I will show you how to do it. If you just see on my screen. Yes, okay. okay. Now I, I, I'm double clicking, go to single access. Now it is highlighting the A access. You have the choice. It either just select this one and select, you know, the the access that you have the both of them created, or if I click on it again, return to single access, you have the little arrow in here. Now it is selecting the three of them. So in here you have some two single accesses, additional ones. Yes. All you have to do to delete them just to uncheck side one, side two. So it will be single. Can I do it again? Okay. Just highlight it. Highlight the the one that is so that is, you know, more than one access. Select side one, deselect side two. Seems to be good. Right. It is working, Dean? No, not yet. Okay, I select my B, I go to single axis, show my screen. All right, I need to get rid of that B1 and B2 up around either side of the C axis. If you go to the little so, arrow, if you go to the little arrow on the right of the A, okay. yep, no, go up, up one, okay. not this one, not that one, see. yeah, that one. That one. If you okay. uncheck, if you uncheck the side one and side, side two. One, side Two. All That's right. it. That's it. Okay, so if I wanted to delete, say, the ones up here on uh, round G. Uh, or, that will be the next uh, the next step we will see within our today's theory. Because that one is not single access you have created within the macro. Okay. Uh, you just stretch it, stretch all the uh, all the grids, and it just been there, I think. Okay. If not, just uh, can you can you do something? Uh, go to the little arrow, the upper one. More. No, okay. as I said, it's not it's not a single access. So can you just mm, play with the macro so we will be uh, familiar with it? I will hit you some sure. more times. How you doing, Bert? Pretty good. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. 
Got it all figured out, buddy? I think so. It's just taking a little bit used to because I have never done it this way before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will put you a bird uh, presenter if you have some questions. We'll see where you have. Uh, Okay. Do you have some questions? No, I, I think I've got it mostly figured out. Okay, perfect. So, does it, are you familiar with the things? I'm sorry? Are you starting to get familiar with the thing? Yeah. Okay, perfect. If you have some questions, don't hesitate. I'm okay. go I'm going to see Chad. Yeah. I have uh I have sent you a go to meeting invitation. Okay, perfect. Do you want to change the background color? Cuz now <laughs> unless you are uh, you are okay with the color. Chad, do you hear me? Hello. I do, Hamza. Hello. Okay. Hamza. Yep. Hello. Yep. Hey, this is Chad. Okay. I hear you. We are having technical problems on our end, and it's we're in and out a lot. You have a lot of technical problems. Yeah, our internet or something is uh, fuzzing in and out on us. We're picking up about seventy-five percent of what you're saying most of the time. Oh. We, we're seeing you visually the whole time, but audio is, you know, fizzing out on us a lot. So we're, we're, we're having some issues. Yeah. Uh, but till now, are you familiar with the thing, with the grid uh, tools? Uh, yes. Okay. Perfect. Do you have any questions about what we just saw till now? I do not right now. Does it make sense for you? It does. Okay, perfect. If you have some questions, uh, I'm here. Don't hesitate. I will. Thanks. <clears throat> no problem. I'm going to see Chuck. Hello, Chuck. Hello. Uh, I'm on your other screen. Can you... Um, do you have two screens? Two screens? No. Okay. I don't see that you have Advanced Steel open. Well, maybe I, I will go and see David, and I will return to see you check uh, Chuck uh, at last. Hamza. Yep. Okay. David is offline right now because of the problems we're having. Okay. Uh, will uh, Will he uh, Will he return or? He's trying to. He he's trying to get hold of our tech guy right now, trying to figure out our problem, what our issue is. His computer actually locked up a little while ago, so. Yeah. Okay, okay. He's so in the we'll, office next door and I, he's having to come in here and tell me he's offline. Okay, perfect. So we'll go and see Dean. <coughs> Dean, are you okay? <coughs> do, you, do you need me on your, on your side? Yeah, I've been uh, working on the uh, other side of the axis. Yep. Just playing with, those, uh, with the um, commands that we just went through. 
Perfect. Do you have any issues? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, if you have some, let, let me know. We'll we will go and see Jerry. Okay, can you see me? Yep. Okay. I think everything's going pretty good. I was just I was just looking at this. The the fifty nine ten and three quarters, that's the out to out width of the grids, right? Exactly. And the one thirty two and a half, that's the length of the grid lines themselves. Exactly. But what I'm what I noticed in here for um, in your side. Mm -hmm. Is you have display types checked, and you try to move uh, move them up. You know that's why they are not aligned. The like the B one, the B two. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I was playing playing with that to see if I could reposition it to make it more readable. Okay. Yes. Well. <clears throat> oh. Okay. You you did it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes, I went to display type, hit single axis, and then I came and picked these and found that I could move an okay, individual perfect. bubble. Perfect. Okay, okay, perfect. If you have uh, any other questions, don't hesitate. <laughs> I'm going to okay. um, see uh, Chuck. Okay. Does it make sense for you, Chuck? I believe so. Okay. Um, the background color doesn't uh, bother you? Yeah, I'd rather have it darker. Okay. Can you just hit escape? If you hit escape, that will deselect the... Okay, then right click options. Do you have any questions about what we saw till now? No. Okay, perfect. So I will I will just um, return to put myself presenter. Okay. Now in here we are, uh, <coughs> we just saw the standard uh, grid macro in here, uh, just put this standard, how to create standard one. But for example, if I uh, want a grid with uh, groups by distance, um, if I select that, you will see the difference between Have the first, day. I'm sorry? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. Well, maybe I will um, I will mute everybody uh, until I finish the next the next parts of theory. After that, I will unmute you. So, if you have some questions, just write them down until I uh, I finish my next part of theory. Seems to be good for all, everybody. That works. Yeah, it's yes. fine. Perfect. Yes, that's good. Okay. Perfect. Okay, uh, for the next uh, part of uh, theory, we will see this tool. And you will notice the difference between those two tools in here. If I select this one, it will ask me, please define endpoints of the grid line. If I select this one, 
he, uh, he is asking me about the first endpoint. If I select this one and the direction of the group, I will go over this direction. Now he is asking me distance between axes. So, for example, if I put um, 40, uh, 40, 160, 360, 500. Enter. For the last one, if I just don't want it, I if I just stop there, I will just hit enter. Now he just creates my axes in here. The distances that I have entered in here are between the first and second the first and third, the first and fourth. You know, the first one is as reference. You will always, you know, um, enter the distances from the first one. Like for example, the second one, it's 40 inches from the first one. The third one is, you know, and, and so on. Uh, the last one created is the reference. That that is how it works. For the total, as you as you might notice in here, it's is the is the total you know of all this direction that we have in here. If I want to put numbers or capital letters, that's all. Um, <clears throat> for the group, you know that's. Um, Group index. If I wanna, for example, if while entering the uh, the distance between axes, I I didn't I didn't you know for instead instead of fourteen here I had uh, fifty. Okay. For that I know that you know between A and B it's forty, but it must be fifty. You know, I have to just select the index one, so he will highlight the two, uh, the two axes in here, and in here we have forty. I will just put in here like uh, okay, fifty. Or instead of numbers, if I put three, it will add them two. So you know, in, it depends on what you what you want to have. Like for example, if I select those two axes, I will I will instead of two axes, I will put three. He will add the third one, and you know just modify the uh, the uh, the naming of all the axes and for the rest it's working exactly the same thing it's just another way to do it okay that was uh, that was this side axis if you wanted the other side just have to pick this this one again select this one and you know, distance between axes. And you will have them. Well, in here I just take numbers from nowhere, but you know, just if you have some good numbers that is that are calculated, you will have, you know, um, result much better than that than that I had in here but you know the thing the, the logic of this uh, this grid is you you enter your uh, your distance between axes right you know right before the creation so it will be created the right way first time and you for the rest it's working exactly the same way uh, with this single axis if you want to add a uh, single axis before or after uh, the axis highlighted. If you want to change the axis highlighted, you have the little arrows in here. 
if you go over and over they will highlight them for displaying types if I want to control the thing manually I will just have to select single axis and control them put them wherever I want Oops, misclicked. Okay, that was the uh, that was the thing for this uh, for this tool in here. I will unmute everybody. Do you have some questions about this tool? So when you set up the uh, the axis originally, you set them up by distance. Exactly. And then when you manually, you manually move them, you uh, arbitrarily, there was no uh, distance involved then? Well, while moving them, it was an example. While moving them manually, it was an example. But you can, like for example, select this one. And instead of having, you know, for example, it's, it is uh, 90 inches between those uh, two axes and you want it to be, 100 you have just to pick him select the um, the sense to where you want to move it and select 10 inch inches he will just move him by 10 inches you can okay, you, you can, can use yeah. dimensions while okay. while selecting them and moving them manually it was an example but you can as i said in here 100 you know, it will just move by the specific value that you have just uh, selected. Very good. I will leave you five minutes just to uh, <clears throat> just to be familiar with the grid with the groups. Uh, I will get you back in uh, five minutes. Okay guys, um, 
Do you have any trouble doing that? I have one question. Yep. When I select it and go to group and choose a group of two axes, it gives me a distance D between them. Yep. And when I go, I tried changing the distance by editing that distance D, but it didn't seem the to change it like I was. Yeah, yeah, I know. The distance is uh, fixed. The only way to change the distance is to go to display types, make it single axis, and move it manually. Like, for example, if you go in here, okay. like just select it and enter the volume manually. Okay. Oops, wait a minute. Yeah, just select them. No, no, just okay. select them. No, oh, I see, I see. You just click it here and select exactly. the Exactly. And okay, you have to put, it's... yeah, 10, 10 inches or something like that. Oops, that went the opposite way I expected. Okay. Seems okay. to be good. And so then when I go then when I go back here, I'll see the updated distance. Yeah. Okay. Seems to be okay. good? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. For the rest of the group, uh, do you have any questions, guys? I think I do. Um, I'm not sure why when I enter my distance it's uh, appearing in the negative direction along the y-axis. Okay. I'm going to make you a presenter. So, I go to add a new group along this axis here. Yep. I designate the line, the direction, then it asks for the distance between the axes. Yep. I enter, say, 10 feet. Um, and it seems to me like like that's uh, going in the incorrect direction because if you look on my other grid here when I created it it counted um, the other way mm, if you may if you yes yeah I see if you go to top view of your, uh, you see on uh, under grid you have little top. Have you have you no have you played with the UCS icon? I not with this user interface. Um, I've used this a little bit um, with AutoCAD. Okay, but, but now we. But this morning you haven't touched the UCS. No. Okay. Um, can you go to the top? Top, you know, the little top view you have in. You have the just one inch, one inch top, one inch left. Left. Top. Two inches top. You have two D wireframe and little top. No, just little more. For the, okay, maybe I wanna make myself presenter and show you that. I'm talking about this uh, icon in here. Oh, oh, okay, right. And select top view. Well, for uh, for that, you have you have always the possibility of you know moving all the grid. Or, you know, if it doesn't make sense for you, um, instead of starting, like, from here, you have just to start from here, if you know what I mean. Well, right. My, my question is, um, when I created this first grid over here, um, why it counted in one direction when I entered distances along my y-axis, and when, why it counted in the other direction? Okay. When I created the, the uh, um, grids individually. Okay. Um, 
when you create standard grids, um, you know, the name is Tolkien, it is standard, it just put the standard uh, grid that is by default on advanced steel. But for example, if you want the one, uh, the first axis to be in here, it's, okay. it's pretty simple. If you just mirror this grid, if you go MI, uh, by the way guys, um, it's for all of you, uh, all the command, the AutoCAD command uh, are still uh, we can use them within advanced seal. You know, all the uh, like for example the mirror um, I and select the this one. No, from here. No. I only have to. You know. If you if you see what you, I was just did. We'll make you presenter. Maybe we will figure it figure it out together on your own machine. Well, I think I've got. Well, I mean, I I did the mirror command, and yep. it seems to work all right. But I'm just wondering why that is the case. What setting do I have to go in and change so that I don't have to do that? Like, what do I change when I'm setting up my grid? Well, just make sure that you are on top view, and you know you are your view CS is on Word. That that's that's pretty much what what they think is. Okay, so since I'm at my top world uh, view and I haven't changed the UCS from world because it should be yeah it should be set to world right now. So and if you are this again, uh, and if you are using the uh, the, the the second command that should that we. Uh, that I just uh, that I just show to you the first direction. Like for example, if you want the one to be the first one, you have to put them. You have to put it on you know on the fur on the on the top, not on the bottom. If uh, yeah, exactly. Does it make sense for you, Bert? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, perfect. <coughs> what about uh, Chad? Do you have any questions? Chad, do you hear me? Hello? Oh, uh, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself? So I will... Uh... Oh, no. If you speak, I, I will be able to hear you. Chad, do you hear me? Oh, yes. Yes, I know you're talking to me. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Uh, do you have any questions? I do not right now. Okay, perfect. Um, how about Chuck? No questions at this time. Okay. Um, David? David is just getting back online. He's going to have to try to catch up here in a little bit. Okay. Uh, Dean? Um, I'm good to go. Okay. How about Jerry? I think I'm okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to just continue on my theory just to finish up with the with the grids and here we have single axes like for example I have made this group of axes but I have in here an axis that's maybe it was for reference or something like that for an existing steel and it doesn't um, doesn't belong to this group 
So uh, if I if I go in here and select single axis, I only have to go in here from here to here, and you know put the name that I that I want. For example, in here, uh, G H number. Oh, G H. Uh, capital letter here we go for example if you if you select uh, like as I just did it was on numbers and when I went to change it to letters it doesn't let me it doesn't took the changes why because uh, this case in here I will m mute everybody first Okay, because in in this label, uh, in this case in here is controlled by the first one. Uh, as you see in here is G H, but is uh, <coughs> it's not uh, it's not within the model. Why? Because in here we have numbers. If you go to capital letters, we go G H. Now it will work because it is really capital letters. Okay, I'm gonna put some ending. That was the the single axis in here. If you, but this one is will be only controlled alone. It's like a line. Uh, it won't belong to this group in here. That was a single axis. Um, I'm not sure in if the uh, if you guys are using curved accesses I will unmute you uh, if it's the case you just let me go uh, just let me know on the uh, uh, within the, the when I let you practice that okay after that the the most useful is to put a level symbol within your model if you select this one you have the you know, just within the the node, just to specify the the absolute height and the relative height of your model. You know, for example, for your columns, just for the height, just to put in here a relative uh, uh, for the uh, for the height, just to specify the floors, the top levels of the all the floors. Um, you won't see. The difference right now, but when we uh, when we will start outputting the uh, when we will start outputting the the drawings, that uh, then you will see the utility of this arrow in here. We will have dimensions showing the elevation levels, uh, so it's really crucial to have this arrow on your. Uh, uh, on your model. So to create the level symbol, so just go in here, select this one, select a point that defines the level, just click in here, that's it. That was the, the second one. Uh, after that you will have those four options in here. It's Pretty simple. For example, in here I have minus icon. That means that this icon is used for deleting some accesses. For example, if I wanna, if I, if I finally get change, some changes on my plan, and they no longer need the six axis, the number six. So if I select delete axis, I delete this one. Enter. They will just you will just be deleted if I hit undo it will return because when I even if I select only this one I hit delete the whole group will be deleted because it is interrelated so um, in here if I select delete access this one enter if I want to delete this one 
enter, and so on. If I want to add accesses, in here we have add access. Select this one. We want to add access on this group. Enter a number of access. For example, I want to add two accesses. The distance between the accesses, for example, uh, 50 inches. I was on four, now it's five and six. And it's uh, it's um, 50 inches away from the fourth axis. That was the utility of delete axis and add axes. Okay, now I will just delete this grid in here. As I said, this is the single axis, and the only way to control it he, he is controlled alone. So just pay attention while using this axis. Okay, for example, I have to trim this uh, the 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 d-axis in here. Um, in here, we have trim axes. If I select this one, I have to select uh, the boundary objects. For example, I want to delete them. Uh, I want to trim it on three, and this one will be trimmed right here. I want to trim, like for example, on two, but just let this one. No, uh, okay, yeah, I, I see. I see what the first reference axis that I that I select to trim on will be kept on memory. Like for example, if I select for example this one, he will automatically trim it within the axis three, three axes. If I want to change, if I undo that, and I want to change each time the axis in which I want to trim, I have to, like for example, trim axis here, enter, this one, enter. If I want to change, I have to do escape, go again in here, trim axis, and select the other axis, like for example, this one, enter, and this one. Okay, we'll unmute everybody. Does it make sense for you guys? Yes, it does. Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll just let you practice that. He will be back on five minutes.
C'est pour ça que tu es tout le temps fou. Hein. Yeah. Peux-tu appeler Dominique Là, il y a une question vraiment urgente, là, une Marcel. Parce que je lui ai dit de, que je vais l'appeler, mais... Okay, guys. Uh, hey, Hamza. Okay. Yep. Um, how do you delete an individual access after you've added it to a group? Where was that again? Uh, it was in here, delete access. Delete access. Okay, I, I highlight the entire group, I guess. Oh, I just picked, I bet I just picked the one. Okay, okay never mind. I got it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I will let you two more minutes. Okay, do you guys have any questions before I uh, jump to the other topics of the day? Do you hear me guys? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, concentrating. <coughs> It's making pretty good sense. Okay, perfect. Uh, for what about uh, Bert? I'm good. Chad? Hello, Chad. Do you hear me? Okay, he doesn't seem to hear me. How about Chuck? Yes, I'm good. Okay, David? Oh, David is not here. How about Dean? Um, Dean here, and uh, I think I'm good to go. Okay. Got to remember where all these things are, is all. Yeah, you just matter of practicing after the uh, after the the class, but you know it's pretty simple. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay, after putting the level symbol, um, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty useful to put a compass. For example, when I, uh, to put a compass on your, within your model, you only have to go 
click compass and select you know a point on your model you will have this uh, arrows in here uh, one point in north west east and south that will give your um, your pieces you know with the way of the assembly it's pretty crucial to have this uh, this compass in your uh, in your model because otherwise you won't have any direction for your pieces seems to be good for you guys how to put the compass go to manage tab and in here compass after that just click on your model he will create it it's as simple as that I will wait for you guys uh, just put one compass in your model got it perfect When I double click on uh, on the compass, um, if for example the north of my model is the west, is like for example in here, I have um, um, <laughs> I can rotate it, you know, you, you have the choice, just click whatever, uh, after that, just rotate it, so the north will be, uh, I will just rotate it again, RO on the keyboard for the rotate command, select the central point, and for example, this way, so the north will point. No, just rotate it the way you want it. As simple as that. Um, that was for the west, um, for the for the compass insertion within the model. Okay, now we will start putting some beams on uh, on the model. For that, I will maybe put standard grid. I will delete this axis and this one. So I will keep it really small project for the for the for the training. It's uh, I go here for my settings. Nearest. I will explain you what I'm doing uh, right now, right later on five minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Remove it. Here. Okay, perfect. Now what I just did is I I kept the three by three uh grid axis. After that I I moved my axis grid within the center of my model. It's suggested to do it, but if you don't do it, it won't create any problems. But it is suggested to, to do it, so the model will be, uh, you know, on the middle. And when you do an orbit, it will turn around the z-axis. It will be more uniform while doing some orbits. That's, that's the first thing. The other thing is, now, we have to insert some beams, you know, some uh, profiles within our model. Okay, for example, to create W section, an L bar, an HSS, it's all in here. Well, now it's in rolled I section, but 
if I click to the little arrow in here, if I click here, I have all the profiles that <coughs> is existing in here. For example, W section, C channel, L bar, uh, Z section, flat, round bar. For example, I will pick a, a square or rectangular hollow section in HSS. If I select that, I if I just be near to uh, to the uh, the grid intersection, I will have the snap point. When I click, I will have this line. At first, it will be just a line, but you know, if I know the level, like for example, if I have snap point, I can just click in here. So it will create my uh, my piece in here or if I go in here select HSS from here to here if I know the value so we'll just go in here uh, for example okay maybe maybe okay for example this is the first uh, level the first floor level as you as you note as you may notice in here we have uh, we had automatically access to this dialog box this this is the macro all the macros on advanced seal is working the same way for example in here by default I have rectangular section if I select in here and I want square section I only have to pick up in here square section. I will have a square section by default. We'll return to the rectangular one. If I want, like for example, you know, I all I have to do is just to browse for my section. I have in here an extensive library. If I go uh, to okay, this one will make sense. After that, for the material, is it steel? Okay. And 300W, for example. In here, we have the first ones that are useful. But in here, if you go last, you have all. And now you have, you know, more choice. For example, if I go on 300W. Okay. That's that's good. For the coating, if I just want it painted, that's it. All those info info will be on 2D drawings, will be filled in automatically. For the positioning, by default it's on the middle. This this uh this snap in here is middle. You don't have to go in here and just check it again. It's it's exactly the same thing. It's only way of presenting things but you know what is what is really the fun with this uh, with this uh, macro is you you are seeing the the changes on real time for example if I select the offset of my HSS uh, from the uh, from the red line the red line is the uh, uh, the line which is controlling the offset you will see it on real time for example now he is centered that's what I want for example is if I want to put an angle on it I have in here preceded angles for example 45 in here we have it if I want 36 I have to put it manually within here and he will put it you know I'm gonna just return that to zero if I want to mirror my uh, my uh, HSS I'm gonna just go in here for mirroring for an HSS we don't see the result it, it is mirrored but we don't see the results. We will see it, for example, for a nail bar or for a C-section. If I want, for example, have an offset from the uh, 
from the, um, the grid intersection if I want to have an offset on within y axis or x axis I have I only have to put it in here like as I just did the column is offset from the uh, from the the grid intersection from its uh, from where it is supposed to be like for example okay just return and put them to zero for the naming you don't have to play with this you only have the only thing that you have to do and you don't have to forget is to put the model role the model role is the only way that allows to the software to recognize this piece in here and to see what's what this piece is for example if I go in here this is a column browse for column that's it now oh, I, I hit escape by the way if you hit escape uh, on the middle of something and you want to return call back the macro you know the the dialog box only have to double click on it and the, the macro will return okay we return to the naming now he, uh, the, the mother role is column that's it. For the naming, you don't have to put anything manually. We will see how to do it automatically. So just don't mess around with that. For the user attributes, like for example, if you want something like this, uh, like uh, call uh, uh, call the shop, you know that will appear on the. Uh, uh, this will appear on the the prototype while detailing this piece. He will he will just pop this uh, this message on the on the on the paper. I'll just delete it. And here we have display types. On display types, we will maybe see it. Um, that will be the next uh, the next theory part. Behavior in here. If I have a section that uh, that contains existing seal, you only have to uncheck all those uh, <coughs> sorry, all those boxes in here. If you check them, so the software won't use this piece for numbering, won't use it for list won't use it for collision check or uh, as structural member so now it's not the, the case so we'll just let them check in here if I want to know the properties of this piece you know the gauge lines the the web thickness the the flange thickness the inner radius I have all the the infos in here on properties you know that is engineering stuff so I want to explain that that was how to create section how to create profile within a bestial <laughs> once the profile is created I can copy it for example if I want to copy this column put my up here if I want to copy this column from here to here, we only have to, you know, CP select it from here to here and to here. That's it. They, I have three columns, exactly the same properties, the same material coating for the naming. I don't have to specify it again. That was how to create, how to insert, uh, how to insert an in, in HSS. For example, if I want to insert a W section, it's exactly the same thing. If I select that, oops, I'm going to go and check for the... Mm -hmm. 
eight feet nine, okay. Okay, now I just inserted a W section. Um, by default, he is inserting. He is. Um, he will insert twelve by twenty six. But you know, you can change that to something much, uh, something uh, smaller. He is always inserting the. Uh, the section on middle so you won't have to mess around with that. For the naming just don't uh, don't forget to uh, to make it a uh, column. So it is column. That's it. Now I can copy it again so just copy it from here all over this axis and maybe copy it copy those two from here to here okay now to uh, I, I only have to put some beams maybe we'll make him much bigger Now I will insert some beams in here. To insert beams, you only have to go in here. One, the main thing that you don't have to forget is to snap on the node of the, uh, the system line, the red line. You have to touch the red line. You have to snap on it. If you don't snap on it, later while connecting your model, you will have a lot of issues so just make sure that you are snapping on the on the right point that's we will go over here in here just make sure that you are snapping on the system line not on the middle in here or here like for example not on the middle or this middle the node perfect <laughs> Check it again, node perfect. Now for the positioning, it's not the right way. But if I go in here, put it top, this is the right way how to do it. Um, for the naming, just on the model role, if you put beam, B for beam, so it will just pick it the first time right. Okay, that was that was how to insert it. Maybe I'm gonna put something much bigger than that. That makes sense. Can I copy that? <coughs> And I'm gonna copy this beam from here to here. Just make sure while snapping, just make sure that the two uh, system lines are linked together, are in touch. Okay. Now while putting this uh, this uh, species in here. Um, you should know that you cannot snap within the grid intersection if you don't have within the in here O snap settings. If you go to steel O snap, please check the 
grid intersection. Can I do it again? O snap, settings, still O snap. Please check grid intersection so you will be able to uh, to snap within the grid intersection. Does this make sense for you guys till now? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so I will let you guys put some beams on your model. After that, so we will go to the last piece of theory of today. Uh, that is beam features in here. So I will let you maybe five, ten minutes to go over it. And we will continue. If you have some questions, don't hesitate. I'm still here. Could you go through that dialog box on snaps again? Yep. If you go to OSnap. Okay. Settings. Settings. Still OSnap, the last one on your right. Okay. And just check the grid intersection. Grid intersections, okay. The one on All the right, middle. Thank you. It's okay. Perfect. Okay. Okay, guys, I will be back on within uh, on five minutes or maybe ten. So if you have some questions, uh, please write them down and I will be right back to answer that.
I'm back, guys. Do you have any questions? Copy an object. Copy the uh, beam, or the column, rather. Yep. How do you do that again? I've got the column drawn, but I don't recall how to, how to copy that. Okay. Well, to copy things, uh, I don't know if you are, if you are familiar with the um, AutoCAD shortcut uh, on commands on the keyboard, or you were using icons. I was using icons. Yeah. Okay, perfect. If you are using icons, it is better to use icons on Advanced Steel 2. And the copy command, in here you have move, in here you have copy. Under modify, the first tab. Here you have copy command. When you select that, you select your beam, enter from here to here will have it. <clears throat> does this work? It does, yes, thank you. Yep, it's welcome. Um, do you have any questions, guys? Do you have any trouble putting all your uh, all your steel materials and you know specifying the direction, all that stuff within your model? That stuff all worked, but I think my computer just locked up, <laughs> or my advanced steel just locked up. Um, <coughs> let me see. <coughs> No. What message are you getting? Uh, it's not doing anything. I can't zoom. I can't view. Can you reach in that? You you was just. I was just in there. You can double click on the the wheel mouse. Oh, there we go. Okay. Can you can you save Maybe. the model? Just save the model. Okay, now we start. I'll close it and yeah, yeah. start at the seal. Where did that go? Did you open it, Advancio? 
Oh, drawing one. Here Upper we... left, drawing one. Yeah. Oh, right there, I missed it. Can you open advanced seal first and then go and open? You guys, any message? <coughs> you can just, yeah, draw one. Oh, here we go. <coughs> okay, perfect. Um, do you have any questions? No, I yeah, I was doing fine up until that. Okay. Uh, you were you was just zooming out a lot, so you lost your model on the universe of advanced cell. I will put myself presenter. For for the rest of the group, do you have any questions before I uh, start the last theory of today? No question. Yeah. Yeah, I need to see how you put a beam in again. I've got columns in in on the grid. Yep. Um, and then I, I go up here and it gives me the choice of columns, um, but I don't see a beam a beam choice. So in, when I put it, try to click on the column icon, it just gives me another column. So beam. Oh, did you have you clicked on the little arrow in here? Okay, I got it. Yeah, from you there. select the okay. first one. Yes, all right. From there to, all right, very good. I, uh, I think I just got it. Okay, okay perfect. Okay, great. Any other questions, guys? Move your, uh, your X, Y, Z, move that to the center of the grid again, please. It is on the center. Right, but how did, how did you do that? Okay. Um, like, for example, if you have your model, like, just beside the X and Y axis origin, just hit move. If you are used to use icons, in here under modify, you will find every command that is useful, like move, array, uh, copy, mirror, rotate, you know, all that stuff under modify on the uh, tool palette. If you are using keyboard shortcuts li like I am doing, M enter, it will move all your, now select all your uh, model, enter, select the points, enter, now you, you, you are able to move it. But where to move it? To zero, zero, zero. I see. Now it is really on the center. Seems to be good? Yes, sir. OK, perfect. Well, um, I will just start the last part of theory of today. For that, I will just um, work on this beam. I will go in here, create a beam from here to here. In here. Maybe put this <coughs> okay and I will copy it again, again, again. Oops. 
adjust the mean depth to it. And cut these. In here. Oops, I wasn't on the right plan. But for the rest, it is okay. Okay, I, I, I haven't I haven't picked any measures, any uh, specific values, but just to create the same the same situation again and again. Why that? Because we are seeing the features today. For the features in here on the tool palette, we have green features, blue ones, and the yellow ones. The green features, we, ha we, we can use them for both uh, columns, you know, beams, columns, and place. But that is the first category. The blue ones, we, have, we can only use them for beams. The yellow ones, we can only use them for plates. That's the main difference. So those, the first, uh, first uh, icons, they are general. They are shared between columns and plates. But for the plates, we will see that tomorrow. Just, you know, uh, we'll see that tomorrow. So I will start with the, uh, with the mitre. For example, if I have, I will delete this axis in here, this column, just to see the mitre. If I have something like this on the corner, and I want to have a mitre between those two beams. Okay. In here, if I select mitre, select this one first, this one second, enter, this message it only means that I don't have any value saved within my library. I will explain to you what is a library. Library is, like for example, if I select the values in here, and I know that those values, I will use them for my next projects, I just have to save them to, and reuse them again. Like in here, and um, properties, if I click, this is mitre. For the cut, for the gap, there is no gap. If I want to put a gap, like one inch gap, I can be able to put one inch gap in here. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Perfect. Um, in here, I'm going to just put it to zero. For the basic trace line. If I if I want it to be really mitre mitred, because it's not the same section, that's why. If I want it to be really really on the middle, I have to check the bisectors, uh, the bisecting line. If I want to create some welds, if I click in here, do you see the little uh, plus? Punk, uh, plus. This is the weld sample on advanced steel. I will just. This is the weld sample on advanced steel. It's just representative. On 2D drawing, there is the real sample of, of uh, welding. But on the 3D model, this, is, this will be the sample for the welding. If I want to create some welds, I only have to check that. So the weld thickness, I will specify that. One quarter, that is correct. OK, we'll just let it like this. Seems to be good for uh, the mitre. Do you hear me, guys? Yes. Yes. Yes, that's fine. What I will do for the, for the features is we will see three features. After that, I will let you practice them. And we will go over and over again. Okay. That w that is the uh, the mitre. The mitre is here. I know I didn't start it from short and at UCS because you know UCS we will see that tomorrow. So I will return on this option tomorrow after seeing what the UCS is. Okay. Now I will see the bevel cut. For example, I will select the um, this. This one. Right. 
I I just did a bevel cut on this uh, on this uh, on this beam in here. We'll do it again. Um, <coughs> select it. Do it again. You only have to select which corner you will have your bevel cut. If you select this corner, you will have it, like from here to here. Is it convex? Is it concave? And you see it in here. Is it just straight? Seems to be good? Yes. Yes. I won't go over all the details because in here it's really, really clear. Start offset and offset for the angle X and Y. Um, you know, and the, you have the uh, you have the the photo in here. It explains everything. So if, for example, you want to change the angle to put it, uh, like for example, um, sixty degrees, you will you will just see it in here. Like for example, forty, you will see it. So that's uh, we call the. the the green, this this green uh, this green uh, object, we call it feature. To have access to the dialog box, the macro, to have access, you have to double click on the feature. So you will have access on to the macro, and you will have access to all the parameters, and you know you should be able to uh, modify them. As I said, for example, I put two. Uh, you know, just like this, you are able to 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 play with all the uh, all the uh, the values to obtain the, the result that you that you are looking for. For example, in here, if I want to have access to the miter macro because what I did wasn't correct and I want to change it, I only have to double click on on this. Or for, for the mate for the miter, you have to select that, right click, advanced joint properties. If you click, you will have really access to the miter macro. If you just double click, you will only have access to macro that it will it will show you what what is this feature. But there is in here a box that is just appears this this box is intelligent box we call it intelligent box so if you double click on it you will have access to the macro too does it make sense for you guys it does yes perfect a hey, question though um, yeah. the the box on the left with all of the features the different color coded things how did you get that up this one Where did that come from uh, no, this one over here. This one? The feet, the one on the left, the the one with the different options for features where you had uh, choices your, between um, your W your or your, menu. Yeah, your icon menu. Where did that come from? That, uh, yeah, oh, that that's, okay. If you go to view, you have tool palettes. I thought it was by default uh, on your screen. If you ha go to view, tool palettes, right, you have... Okay. Modify. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't have it. No problem. <clears throat> okay, that was the miter. After that, we saw the, uh, the 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 bevel cut. If you go to corner cut, when I select this one, for example, I will do it on this beam. If you select this corner, you will have this corner as you know cut. And it's exactly, it's slightly the same, the same thing as the bevel cut. You know, it will depend on what what is your uh, your preferences and what is the the situation that you are working on. I will do it again for the other corner, corner cut. Select that. We we'll do it for this corner. If I select. This corner, he will do it for this one. But now I want this one. 
with the waste by default for this one. Seems to be good for the three first ones. Yes. Yes. Uh, are you able to go um, to to memorize four 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 uh, features, or you want to practice first and then we'll go over the three next? Let's go for another one. Okay, perfect. The last one, I won't be, you know, too, um, I don't want to be too much. Oh. Too late. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you want to practice, no problem. Okay, maybe I will let you practice. I won't, uh, I won't go too fast. So, I will let you practice the uh, bevel cut, the corner cut and then the mitre. Uh, I will let you five minutes for the three features and then we will go uh, over the next three again.
Okay, guys, do you have any questions? Do you have any trouble doing that? Nope. Okay, I will go and see Bert. Do you have any questions? No, I'm good. Okay, how about Chad? I'm good. Chuck? I'm good. David? Uh, David is still off. <laughs> oh, yeah. For Dean? I'm okay. Jerry? I think I'm okay. Okay, perfect. Good group. Um, I will jump and go to see cut at object. So we saw the third, the three first. Now we will see cut at object. When we select that, we he asks me the question select section to cut against. Uh, so I wanna cut against this beam, and I wanna cut this beam. Hit OK. He will just stop the first time he will just uh, he will touch the object to cut against. If you wanna switch side, you know this mm, yeah. For this for this section switch side it's not it's not really uh, not really uh, correct, but uh, if I want to create some welds, I will be able to create them. But if, for example, I, well, I had something like this, oops, um, um, I don't have access to the uh, the the uh, the macro. For that, to have access to the macro on this uh, on this. Uh, on this situation, you have to double click on the beam, go to display types, and make it features. Then I go over it again, double click on the beam that have some features. If the features doesn't appear, like I was in here, double click on the beam, go to display types, and make it features. Now to have access to the macro, you have to double click on the, uh, you have to right click and go to advanced joint properties. So you will have the, 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 the intelligent box of the, the, um, the cut at object. So if you go to cut, uh, you, you know, it's, it's working lightly as uh, um, the, uh, the miter in here. If you want to like uh, a straight cut to be straight whatever the angle is if you want it if you just want it to be uh, to adapt within the angle if, if you want to create weld or not it's exactly the same thing so uh, I want uh, I want to go over more details that was the, the how how the cut at object is working. After that, we will see. We will go and see the uh, rectangular contour. If I select that and I select, for example, this beam, I only have to go to select, you know, uh, center points to my rectangular contour to have rectangular contour in here within this beam. So. Uh, so to redimension the contour of this rectangle, you have two choices: whether do it manually by just snapping on this grabs in here and redimension them, or double click on the rectangle and put manually the dimensions. Does this make sense for you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. For the positioning. Yes. Uh, I, I just picked the center point. This is center. If I want to read uh, uh, offset it, for example, from here uh, to here, just to have you know something is passing through the beam. So if I select the beam, it is really there is no uh, there is no web for the, this area. For the contour, for example, if I want to put a gap to this, uh, to this, to my rectangle, uh, like a half an inch, 
to have a gap in here not really a problem if I want to move this rectangle lightly in here I only have to snap but it's it's working I will return in here if I want a side one side two if you if, if I don't want my feature to go through the beam I have the uh, side one side two if you see what is uh, what is uh, doing in here it just cuts uh, uh, like for example one inch on the beam one inch deep on the beam doesn't go through all the beam from you know from top to the bottom if I'm uh, if I'm going to put it realistic that's what it will do Does it make sense for you guys? It does. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, we'll return in here. Positioning, contour, corner finish. If I want to have a radius in here, for example, one inch radius, only have to go in here. Uh, if I want, you know, some bordering out, I can have them, but I just let it to just like this. Okay, that was for the uh, rectangular contour center. Uh, now, I, uh, I am picking exactly the same thing. I, uh, I say exactly the same thing. But instead of selecting only center point, I am selecting two points. Um, I will do it again. Like, for example, this is the central point. If I select that, I only have to select the beam and a point. That's it. But for this one, the only difference is when I select this one, select the beam, I have to select two points that is defining my rectangle. Does this make sense for you guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I, yes. For example, if I... Um, in here it's exactly the same thing it's only matter of selection if you want if you are more uh, comfortable with one central point or two points that are defi defining the, uh, the rectangle okay <coughs> for the uh, <coughs> for the circular contour UCS if you select that like if I select this beam and I select this corner I will have center I will be able to play with the radius to make it bigger uh, for the position will be able to position it as I want um, if I select it I will be able to position to redimension the circle manually Um, in here it's exactly the same thing but instead of selecting only the center of the circle I will select the the uh, the first and the second point I will show you how select this one first and the radius it's working exactly the same way seems to be good okay. yes yes yeah. Perfect. It's exactly the same macro. I won't pass through it again. Now we have some new uh, polygon contour UCS. If I select uh, to have that, maybe it's better to be on 2D wireframe. If I select uh, polygon contour, If I select uh, Polygon Contour UCS, I will select. Uh, okay. Um, if you, while pointing this option, it's Polygon Contour UCS. That's why you have to have your UCS on the on the same plane. That's uh, 
that you are working on. That's why I will go and UCS as object. We will see all the UCS uh, icons tomorrow. For now, we will just use UCS as object. Select this object. Select, you know, the yellow one. Enter. So the X and Y will be on the beam. You see it? So it will be on the on the beam. Now, if I return, that's that was on UCS, and here the fourth one on the list. Now, if I return to features, uh, polygon contour, to UCS, select this this beam. If I start, you know. No matter the shape that I will draw with my polyline, he will just make it as feature. I will just make something. See for close. You see in here? No matter the shape. It's not rectangle or you know something. No matter the polyline that you, you was drawing, he will just make it as a feature on the beam. See it in here? And you will be able to put a gap and to put side one, side two. You know, to put a gap in here. Uh, right. Sometimes the gaps are limited. Like for example in here the limit maybe it's uh, it's one quarter. But the sides, I can specify to put it just in one side, or you know, to specify the depth that he was he will uh, control. But now I will just let it like this. Does it make sense for you for the uh, polygon contour? Yes, yes. For the polygon yes. contour, j just just don't don't forget to put your UCS at the object that you want to. Uh, to make your features on. So after that we will see the last one and I will let you practice that. Element Contour UCS. Okay, if I if I select this piece for example and I'm gonna make it much if I make it pass through the B and I get, for example, just okay. This beam is passing through this one. For example, if I select element contour, you see yes. <coughs> he is asking me select the object which is to be modified. I I am selecting this beam. Enter. Oops, no enter between them. Select this one and. Select the object as cut reference, this one. You will just draw the shape so it will pass through this uh, the beam. If you wanna go, uh, if you wanna put some corner, some uh, some gap, so we will uh, so we will allow the uh, the object to pass through the beam. Maybe it will be more visual if I put it to realistic. You see in here? Oops. Here is the little gap that I, the one quarter gap. Mm -hmm. Seems to be good for you guys? It's good. Yes. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you practice the uh, those uh, seven this time, <laughs> seven commands that we just saw. It's uh, it's exactly the same way. It's working the same way. So I will let you just um, get familiar with that. If you have some some questions, I'm still here. I go up to the uh, move the UCS to object and take that, but I can't seem to get the UCS up onto that item onto the uh, beam that I'm trying to work on. 
It's I do okay. the command. I'm gonna make you presenter. Okay. Now you, you see the little the little. Uh, uh, can you just click on the the yellow line? Yep, S select this one, enter. Now you see your okay. X and Y axis are on the plane. You only have to yes. select, you know, the yellow one and uh, uh, it will work. Okay, we'll make myself center again.
Okay, guys. Do you have any questions or any trouble doing that? Do you hear me, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay, how about Bird? Do you have any questions? No, I, I think I'm getting it. Okay. How about Chad? I'm getting it. Uh, Chuck? Yeah, I think I'm good. Okay, how about Dean? I'm going to be practicing some this afternoon. Perfect. How about Jerry? Yeah, I think I'm getting it okay. Perfect. Well, um, I will jump to the uh, to the other uh, to the other to the six last uh, features. By the way, the feature that we just did are available for plates too, and we will go and pass through them again tomorrow. So um, just if you practice this afternoon, that will be the perfect thing to do. Uh, just practice those, uh, those elements in here. So tomorrow you won't have that much trouble to, uh, to apply them on uh, the plates. Okay, now I will jump on the cope. Um, as you might know in here, we need the cope on this beam. So to have the cope uh, manually, uh, the software will do it automatically while connecting our uh, model. But some situations uh, need to be forged manually. So that's why we have in here all those tools that are helpful for uh, the manual work. If you go in here and send it to Cove, uh, select the beam at the reference. This one, oops, sorry. If I select this one, I will have in here this scope. Oh, maybe I will. This will be better if I create new beam. So it will be more visual for you guys. Okay, we'll just move it and enter on the keyboard. Move it in here. If I select cope, I want to cope this side, we'll just do the cope correctly. Do you see it? And now you can play with the width within x-axis, like for example in here I want to put 4. If I put 6, if you check this, this side in here, if I put 6, you know, you, you see it on real time. For the depth, if I put 2, you will see it too, so just uh, you have to play around with it. Uh, if you want a radius, like for example half an inch, so we will have it like this. So we will have your cope in here. That was for the cope, and those six commands in here, those six features, are only used for beams. If you try to apply that on plates, it won't work. Because you know the blue is for beams, the yellow is for the blue is only for beams, the yellow is only for plates, the green is for both together. Okay, uh, this is the code that is uh, you have this queued uh, option. I will show it to you. If I copy this one in here, I delete the feature, so I will have a normal beam. 
and I try to put skewed cope. Select the side, perfect. If I want to put, you know, some skewed, something like that, you know, do you see? I will put something more, uh, you know, uh, put, for example, 20 in here. Um, for the axis, if I, if I put 20, do you see it in here? Do you see the difference? Yes. Yes. If you are working on an angle, you have that uh, possibility. Okay, if I copy this beam again in here, I delete the feature, so I will have correct beam. I have in here the parametric code. The parametric code now he is uh, the main beam. The main beam is this one and this one. He would just go and put all the, the cope automatically. All the copes. You don't have to create this one, create the short name, and create this one. He will put three copes and put them together in one uh, parametric cope. You have all the dimensions in here. You have the shortening radius. If I put half, you will see them. Uh, you will see the web distance. If I put like one inch, the web shortening, the 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 shortening from the the limit to the web. Uh, you know, and I will explain you in general how it works. For example, in here the first box. In here you have distance web. Uh, this is number one, and on the photo, the value number one is linked to the line number one. So you are not uh, you are not uh, lost on on the macro in here. Seems to be good for you. Yes. Yes. Perfect. If you want to create some wells or something like this, you only have to go and here you are in parameters, you know, all the dimensions and all that stuff. If you want to create wells, you have to go in here and check this box in here. The well type you have in here, the list, uh, <coughs> the weld location, if it is on site or on the shop. Uh, finally, you have your library if you want to save your values. If you want to save them, in here, the, here is the line. If you want to edit the line, so we will rename it like uh, test 01. And I go and hit OK. What I suggest is each time you create a connection or, you know, a cope or something like that, and you will, you know, you are, you are sure that you will, it will be useful, uh, like for example, next project or something like that, just make it, uh, just save it into your library. One more thing, in here, <clears throat> if I want to have access to the, uh, to the macro, I have two ways. If I select on, if I select the weld and right click, advanced joint properties, I will have access to the macro. And here I can modify. Or, if I have the box, I can double click on it. Or the third thing is if I double click on the on the beam, go to display types, go to features, make them appear, and select one of the features. So it only select it, right click, advanced joint properties. So we have three ways to have access to the uh, to the, the the macro. <clears throat> And here you have the shortening. If you want to shorten, like for example, this uh, this beam, select that. Now it is shortened. You see the system line is continuing while the real object is stopping right here. The reference, if I want to, for example, make it within the angle, for example, in here two or maybe ten. Do you see the difference in here? Within the axis, if I put ten, you know, I can I can also put negative values my minus twenty. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect. 
beam clearance if i have for example this this uh, this uh, this feature in here it's not really useful you know it's it's not really useful it's you you, you are it's better to go and clear the beam manually than use this uh, this uh, this feature in here so i will just copy this in here and delete this one for that I will just double click and put something much smaller perfect we'll make it go through the beam perfect and here I have element contour rule if I select this one select the beam to modify this one enter this one the main difference between what I just did here and uh, this one, you will see it. And here he creates a welds by default, he creates shortening. If I don't want any shortening in here, have create shortening, I have to uncheck that. Uh, the contour shape, if it's exact or standard or casing. You know, do you see it in here? You have a rectangle that allows the beam to go through the web of the other beam. If I want to put a gap in here, I have much more gap to put in. You know, I have the I have the ability to put uh, more. Uh, I have more choice. You know, I have more values than the one that I have here. So that's the main difference. Uh, does it make sense for you guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Maybe I will I will let you practice those six uh, last features, and if you have some questions, I'm still here. Okay.
Okay, guys, do you have any questions? No, I think I'm good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is that the case for all of you guys? I believe so. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, guys, uh, I hope it was um, good, the first, uh, the first uh, training lesson. Um, tomorrow we'll, um, we will meet the... Um, I will send you the link, and it will be the same, um, uh, the same time. So just register for tomorrow. I will send you the link uh, on the next 15 minutes. Um, I hope you will have time to practice what we saw today, this afternoon. So uh, tomorrow you, you won't have uh, that much trouble. And to the end of the day. Okay, very good then. Thank you. Excellent. Thank You're you very welcome. Thank You're you. welcome. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.